new teeth. It's weird. Now tell me, am I ginger? In the 1930s, the German anthropologist von Kienigswald was in a Chinese market when he discovered something truly astonishing. It was a fossilised molar tooth of some kind of ape, but it was six times the size of a human molar. And after much more exploring throughout Chinese markets, more were discovered. And these molars clearly came from a gigantic ape, which was subsequently named Gigantopithecus, from the Greek meaning giant ape. Very imaginative. A handful of fossils of Gigantopithecus have since been found throughout Southeast Asia, showing that they had a broad range. But these fossils so far only include the teeth and lower jaw of Gigantopithecus. From these remains it's been found that they bear a close relation to modern orangutans. And the fossilised teeth also suggest a purely herbivorous diet for Gigantopithecus. And these fossils also date Gigantopithecus to have lived from 9 million to 100,000 years ago. And this time frame indicates that Gigantopithecus is very likely to have coincided with early species of human, such as Homo erectus and Homo heidelbergensis, and possibly, given that it was around 100,000 years ago, possibly even Homo sapiens. If we are to take it that estimates about the size of Gigantopithecus are correct based on the size of the fossilised jaws, then it would have been three metres tall and would have weighed about half a metric tonne. And being this size would have made Gigantopithecus invulnerable to most predators, and each individual would have had, had to have enormous ranges uh, for feeding on the produce of the expansive tropical forests of Asia. If we are to take it that uh, estimates of the size of Gigantopithecus based on the fossilised jawbones are correct, then it's safe to say that the size of Gigantopithecus was about three metres tall, and it would have weighed about half a metric tonne. However, this size, while it was one of the many attributes that contributed to the success of Gigantopithecus, it was also a key player in the downfall of Gigantopithecus. You see, while Gigantopithecus was alive, the Himalayas were still forming as the subcontinent of India was heading towards Asia. And as the mountains grew, this subsequently changed the wind currents going across Asia, and therefore restricted the amount of rain that could get to the tropical forests of, well, of Asia. Subsequently, Gigantopithecus was unable to survive in the uh, world of expanding grasslands and shrinking forests. And yet the smaller relatives in Sumatra and Borneo were able to continue surviving as they depended on fewer resources. While this may appear to be a bleak ending for Gigantopithecus, some may argue that there is hope yet. In the Himalayas there are legends of a giant ape in the forests of the valleys called the Yeti, from the Tibetan phrase Yete, meaning man-like animal. And others have suggested that the Yeti is in fact an elusive species of bear that lives in the Himalayan foothills. If either of these theories turn out to be correct, then it may seem that in this world there are yet more creatures to discover, and not only that, but they could provide an explanation to what seem to be monsters of legend, but are really just relics from lost ancient worlds. And on that note, Merry Gigantopithecus. Yeah, that was awful, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm never saying that again. Oh, and uh, speaking of uh, creatures of legend and monsters, I've currently got a podcast going with uh, a chat from university where we talk about how mythological creatures could work in the real world. I've left a link to them in the, in the description. Currently on SoundCloud, but we're looking for a new home, probably iTunes, but uh, when that's updated, I'll update the description too. Merry Christmas.
Christmas.